This is Orrin Hatch. Orrin Hatch made it. He came up from a chicken coop to become the chairman of first the Judiciary Committee and now the Senate Finance Committee. He's also the president pro tempore of the Senate. He's been in the chamber for 40 years and he's one of the chief architects of the tax reform bill. Now we know that he came from nothing because he uh, indignantly reminded uh, the public of this when Sherrod Brown, Ohio Democratic Senator, was berating his tax bill as a giveaway for the rich. Well, this tax cut really is not for the middle class, it's for the rich. And that whole thing about higher wages, well, it's a good selling point. But we know companies don't just give away higher wages. Corporations are sitting on a lot of money now. They're sitting on a lot of profits now. I don't see wages going up. I come from the poor people. And I've been here working my whole stinking career for people who don't have a chance. And I really resent anybody saying that I'm just doing this for the rich. Give me a break. I think you guys overplay that all the time, and it gets old. And oh, frankly, you ought, to, you ought to quit it. Mr. Chairman, the public oh, believes it. Just, I'm not through. Okay. I get kind of sick and tired of it. Mm -hmm. uh, true, it's a nice political play. Well, Mr. But Chairman, it's not true. with all due respect, I get sick and tired of the richest people Regular in order, country, Mr. Chairman. Getting richer and Regular richer order. And richer. order. Regular Regular order. Middle, we do a tax Regular order. order. Middle wait class wait minute, Regular over order. And over and over wait, again. Wait How many second. times do we do this before we learn this? Ronald Reagan, when he was talking about trickle-down economics and tax cuts and all of the different policies that were tilted radically toward the rich, would always talk about his kind of impoverished, very humble upbringing. Uh, it's it's a it's a way to say, look, uh, you know, how could I be doing favors for the rich here when I grew up in a chicken coop? And literally, uh, he says that he, uh, when he was going to law school, uh, lived in a converted chicken coop. It may or may not have been the same chicken coop that he says was his first job when he was five and six years old. He said he, it was his job to tend the chickens. The reason we're talking about Orrin Hatch's upbringings is when he tweeted out this exchange that he had with Sherrod Brown, he added another detail, which was that he worked as a janitor to get himself through law school. So he knows what opportunity is, and that's why he's doing tax reform, so everybody else can have the same opportunity. So I went back and took a little look at you know how Orrin Hatch did get through law school and compared it to the House version of the tax bill, which is the only one that's been passed by a full chamber yet. The, the uh, Senate committee that Hatch chairs has passed a version, but that hasn't gone through the Senate yet. In the House bill, there's a provision that says that if a graduate student is getting a tuition waiver as a result of the work that he's doing teaching uh, students, now all of a sudden that gets reported to the IRS as income and the student must pay taxes on it. So if you get a $30,000 tuition waiver, you know, this is money you never saw, you just didn't have to pay for the graduate courses you're taking, that now counts as $30,000 in income, which means you need to come up with about 25% of that. Uh, you know, that's eight, $9,000 come tax time. And a lot of graduate students are living on stipends of say $15,000 a year. So you're talking about you know, more than half of a stipend that a graduate student gets going right back to pay taxes on something that they never even got. And so here's here's the fun part. Uh, Orrin Hatch went to law school on a scholarship. And not only did he go to law school on a scholarship, so this is the story I wrote about this at The Intercept, the way that he got the scholarship is just absolutely perfect. So he took the LSATs at a cathedral at, at Pittsburgh, after he takes the entrance exam, he wanders up to the 14th floor to try to apply for the law school. It's locked, so the poor guy's looking sad. A professor sees him and says, what, what do you want, kid? What are you doing? He's like, oh, I was trying to apply for law school, but it looks like the registrar's office is... He's like, here, let, I'll take your application. It's no problem. And then he looks at Orrin Hatch and says, you know, we want you here. And he's, he says, Really? And it emerges that Orrin Hatch is Mormon. And the professor says, you know, I used to teach in Arizona. There were a lot of Mormons there. The Mormons were the toughest competition. They are the best. He's like, in fact, we have an honors scholarship that you should apply for. And Orrin Hatch tells him honestly, well, I didn't have very good grades. So I don't think I really deserve an honors scholarship. 
the professor says, well, look, I am on the honors scholarship committee. Trust me, you should apply. So Orrin Hatch turns in his application, which he calls the sloppiest scholarship application in the history of the University of Pittsburgh. And he gets, with this sloppy application and bad grades, an, an honor scholarship to attend law school at the University of Pittsburgh. And he does not get taxed on this, this scholarship. He then uses this story to tell people today that, look, he made it. He had opportunity. You should make it. Now, it's important to note the bill that he passed through his committee does not have the tax on tuition waivers. That's the House bill. We'll see. We'll see what winds up in in the final version. And uh, Orrin Hatch, we we would expect, given his history with it, will fight tooth and nail to make sure this doesn't get in the final version. Right? Exactly. Er, er, Eric, Eric Eric is convinced that he's gonna that he's gonna go to battle for it. The House bill also uh, eliminates the deduction for student uh, student interest. People like Hatch back in the day didn't have to pay student loans because they either got their you know, tuition waivers, they, were, you know, they, they didn't wind up with, with debt coming out, partly because of the cost of education. The tuition at the University of Pittsburgh Law School back when he went, 1959 to 1962, ranged between $1,100 and $1,300 a year. $1,300 equals $11,000 today. Yet there's a flaw in the way that they think about or in that they calculate purchasing power because you definitely cannot purchase the same thing. You, you cannot take $11,000 and go to the University of Pittsburgh Law School and get a year's worth of education there. You, and anybody watching this who knows anything about tuition probably knows that. If you look it up, it's something like 38000 I think it's 38500 You could look it up. They have not quite figured out how to factor in the difficulty that people have in getting to the same place as somebody like Orrin Hatch, given that it would have cost Hatch, like the, the way to do it is to work backwards. What would $38,000 have been in 1962? It would have been closer to $4,000 a year. Hatch says that he could barely make it through because he was, I think he, I've seen a story that he was working uh, the night shift at a women's dorm. You know, he was, he was working around the clock because he's Mormon at a young family that was growing. Uh, and also then, then going, going to law school. So without it costing much of anything, he could barely make it. If he had to pay $4,000 in 1962 dollars, uh, I, I think he would readily say that there's no way he could have done that or he would have had to take on uh, huge loans.